Jerry T here. Yep, we're out in the garage today. Something big going on. Today, we are going to pull the motor out. I'm gonna re-grease it and put it back in. I don't need to replace my motor, but I thought I'd show you guys what it takes to get this thing apart, and it just might not be so difficult as it sounds. It really isn't, not a lot here. So I'm gonna take you step-by-step step through it. So let's give it a shot. So here we are. Here I thought I'd show some of the tools that are gonna be needed to do this job. Okay, we're definitely, we're gonna need some sort of hammer. It's not a necessity for this project, but it will make it easier. We are gonna need a wrench. We're gonna need a four millimeter Allen key. We're gonna need a T20 torque wrench back in a second. We're going to need a 10 millimeter uh, wrench, snips, and some extra ties, and some lube, and of course, paper towels. So now, some of these things are extras, so I thought I'd show you. You, you don't need to use, I'm gonna use a drill with my torque to t take the bolts out for the motor. You don't have, if you don't have the bits, you can use a set of torque wrenches, and these are torque, not Allen, and I brought a pair of Allens to show you the difference. Or you can use a torque wrench, okay? What you don't wanna do when you're using a drill is you don't wanna to put too much into it and strip out your screws. So this is probably the best way to do it if you don't have feel you have a feather touch. So that's the way to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this stuff because, oh, I also wanna tell you too, if you're worried about not having a torque wrench, if you've got a set of uh, uh, um, drill bits like this, you're gonna have a set of torque wrenches, uh, torque nuts, and they would be back in here. The ones you probably never use, so, but they are there. And we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you how to position your bike in place. The first thing we need to do is we need to prepare our bike and get it in position so that we can get to the back wheel. We can remove it fairly easy. Now the move I'm gonna do now is something you can do whether you wanna clean your bike, get in the chain area to clean really well, get up underneath it. It's really, uh, it's a great move. It's a good position to put your bike in for servicing or work. I recommend you do it with two people. It's much easier and safer. I've done this so many times, it's very easy. So I am gonna explain. So let's get our workbench out of the way. Go ahead, wheel this off. All right. To prepare the bike, the first thing we wanna do is make sure we get anything off the back of the bike. If we have our seat up real high, we should lower that down. If we have any mirrors or anything protruding very high off our handlebars, you wanna remove those because we're gonna flip this bike upside down and relax it on some four by fours on the ground here. Or if you don't have a four by four, you can use two two by fours, okay? And stack them on top of each other, okay? But you want at least four inches off the ground. And I'll show you in a, in a second. So I've laid down a, a tarp here, and the tarp will actually help keep the bike from getting scratched up when I do this. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to grip the back brake handle and I'm gonna hold on to this back brake and not let go, okay? And I'm going to lift my bike ever so gently up. Straighten it up. Okay, I've taken the battery out, so we're safe there. I'm going to squeeze the back brake. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift the handlebars straight up and I'm gonna come back this way. Now. Once I still have the back brake engaged, the bike can't move because the brake's in, uh, locked. What I'm gonna do at this point is I'm going to reach up, and I'm going to grab on to the front spokes, or the front, uh, and I'm going to walk my bike back. Need a little more room here. It's that easy, it's not that tough. So now we've got our bike in position where we can get that rear tire off, it's easy. We don't have to bend too much and crouch, so. But if you need to service your bike, get up underneath, clear your transmission, clean it out. This is the best way to handle it. Okay, here we are. 
Now that we have our bike in position where we can do maintenance and get this tire off, the first thing we need to do is, what you want to do is get your camera and take a picture of the orientation of the washers and the lock nuts in there. And you want to do that on both sides. The reason being is if you can see in here, you can see that washer that has a notch. What that does, it's a torque washer and it keeps the motor from spinning. So it keeps it locked into the frame. And that is the lock washer here we're gonna to have to remove. So once we've got our pictures of our orientation, we know how to put it back together. We need to take these nuts off here. And there's two, one on either side. Again, get our pictures. So we have one nut, we have one washer, and then we get down to our torque washer here that will have to be removed to get the tire off. All right, so now that we have the nut and the washer off, we need to remove this torque washer here using your four millimeter wrench. We'll take that off, and we wanna make sure that all the washers and screws are kept together. So we're gonna go ahead and just slip this off. We'll give you a good look and you can see how that's keyed. It's flat on two sides. And so is guy. We'll get the other side off. Be real careful as you got an orientation of washers there. And if you can keep them together, all the better. Okay, right. On this side here, I've had to twist this washer out a little bit. She wanted to, she was in there wedged a little bit. So a screwdriver will help get that out. So it just slips right off. And we'll go ahead and here. Okay. So now, the next step is actually removing the tire. We're that far, that's all there is to it. So, now, the trick, the pro tip is 10 millimeter wrench. Now, because your shaft here is flat on two sides, your 10 millimeter will fit right over that. And that'll help to shift the tire to place while trying to remove it off the rim. All right. Now we've got everything disconnected, our wheel should lift right out. But da Okay, now we're gonna set up our workbench and show you how to get the actual motor out. All right, now, in order to get the motor out, we wanna find a good workbench. We have one, but I have found this works great. Gives you a flat surface to work, and you don't have to worry about the shaft wobbling the tire, so. There we go. So I will show you, at this point here, we need to remove these six screws and it should lift the motor right out of there. And we'll do that with our T20 torque wrench. Okay, so I've got my drill here with my T20 torque on it. I've set my drill to low. If you've got a clutch on here, I'd set it low. We don't want to strip out these screws. Certainly don't want to drop the screws like I just did. But yes, that will happen. All right, that wasn't tough. Now, we're gonna need to, all right. Now that we've got the six bolts off here, we need to flip the tire over. It's what holds the cord to keep it from wrapping around the shaft. So that comes out very simple. You just show it a little love, pry it up, hold your cord, and pull that out. So you've gotten it out whole. Do put this back over couple glove taps, voila, la mota. So this is the part that just slips right in and out. So this would be your old motor. Your new motor would just go right in. So I'm gonna clean this up. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking a little bit of this grease or lubricant and I am just running along my plantar gears with some new grease into the teeth. You don't need a lot. You have three sets of gears here and a little grease on each gear sign. There we go. The gears look good. Uh, the grease wasn't bad, but for 3,000 miles, we want to make sure. So let's go back and start a reassembly. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and drop my cord down and feed everything in. And down she goes. Make sure that nice and tight. I'm going to take these six screws and we are going to little thread lock on each one. So these are the screws that will 
hold the plate back in. I don't want them to come loose again. So whether you're adding an accessory to your bike or you're tightening up a loose bolt, thread lock. Always add thread lock. You'll never have to mess with it again. I hear people talking about, oh, I had to fix my, my kickstand. Oh, it just keeps getting loose. I've done it once. Put this on and never had to worry about it. So. All right, so let's, now that we've added the thread lock onto the screws, you don't gotta crank them. It's not a small block Chevy you're repairing. And if you have a clutch on your drill, that will keep you from too much torque. If you don't, just a typical T20 torque uh, hand screw uh, driver will work just as good. You don't need to have all the fancy stuff. Get this job done. And our last one. Flip our bike back over. Our tire. And we have to put our washer back in. That will keep the cable from slipping around. Torn up. Okay, now that we've got our motor actually back in, we've got bolted back into place. We put our washer here that will hold that in the place. To keep the cord from fraying, we can go ahead and reset now. Don't forget, you got two flat spots on your shaft here, so you want to make sure you have it lined up correctly. All right, now that we have everything reassembled and put back together the way we took it apart, we've taken pictures, we checked that, we can go ahead and do a test run. Now, if any of this seems difficult or confusing or impossible for you to do, please find a certified mechanic that can help you. There's a few out there that will service bikes they don't sell. I have a mechanic that I go to when I need help. And uh, so do the same. So hopefully this helped. If you have any questions, feel free to email me, text me. I'd be happy to get right back to you and help you get through this. Thank you for watching.